Hey everyone, it's James here from the Dev Genie Academy, and in this particular episode, we're going to be looking at a scene manager. So before we go further into our terrain rendering, I want to first of all step back and look at this new class. In the entities package, create a new a new class called a scene manager, and this is going to take in all of the variables, all the values that we've got set currently in the test game, and add them into its own class. So we can just draw them in from the test class when we need it really, from the test game class when we need it. So that's going to consist of our entities, our lighting and all the other variables that are stored there in the test game class currently. So create an instance of the entities list, create an instance of the terrain, we need our spotlight and our point lights list and we also need the singular instance of the directional light as well. We also need a few of the variables for the lighting so that includes the float of the light angle we're not going to pass a value in there because we'll be adding that into the constructor. That's the only value needed in the constructor. We also need a float for the spot angle, which will instance to zero, and the spot increment, which will be one. So again, as I said, in the constructor, we're just taking the light angle and we can instantiate the entities and also the terrains. And I'm missing a variable here. It was the ambient light. No, it's not float, it's a vector 3f. So we need to create that vector 3f as well of ambient light. So the ambient light, we already have a constant variable for that. So we can just instantiate that to the ambient light constant that we've got set up in the constructor. And all we need to do now is just do getters and setters for all of those values so we can grab them and also change them when we need to. I want to add one more function here though, and it's the ambient light function. Instead of passing in a vector 3f to set the value, I want to three I want to pass in the three the three floats in there to create the vector here in this class. So we can do a set ambient light of a float x, y, and z, and then it's just ambient light equals a new vector 3f with those values. There we go. So that's all we need to do in the scene manager class for now. Obviously we'll be going back in there later on to create more functions, but that's enough for now. So in the test game class, if we remove out the camera move speed and mouse sensitivity variables into the constants class, we can get rid of those from the test game. We can also get rid of the list of entities and terrains. They're not needed there anymore. Um, the light angle, spot angle and spot ink and all the lighting can be removed as well. Uh, we need to also need to create an instance of our scene manager and in the constructor we can then say scene manager is a new scene manager and we pass in the light angle of negative 90 as it was before. So we can see there's quite a lot of errors here but all we need to do is take out that constructor for the terrain because it's already constructed and scene manager dot get terrains can then add in that terrain so here, instead of doing scenemanager.getTerrains.add, let's change that and do scenemanager.addTerrain. And if we just put that in a new line and do the same again, add terrain. So just so we don't have to do loads of pointers to get to the stage we need to in creating that terrain or adding it to the list. So if we find the existing getters and setters for terrains, let's create a new function in the scene manager of a add terrain and we pass in the terrain here of terrain there we go and it's just this dot terrains dot add terrain just makes it nice and tidy in our test game class and there's not too many calls being made and again we can get rid of the constructor for the entities and we can do scene manager dot add entity the same as we've done for scene manager in that for loop and we can copy that into our test block here as well there we go and where's our terrain stuff here there we go so it's again just the same thing public void add entity there we are entity entity and it's just this dot entities dot add entity fairly straightforward so next up is the directional light so in here if we just move that down for now scene manager dot set directional light we can just pass all of that constructor for the directional light into it. Um, point lights, uh, scene manager dot set point lights to be a new point lights list. We need to make sure we've got a closing bracket there. And the same for the spotlights as well. 
and that should do it for the init method of the test game. Now on to the input method. So this one's a little bit weird, but it's only temporary code for this one, so it's not too bad. It's just scmanager.getSpotlight of sub zero, so it's the first item in the list. Could do really having a check there to make sure that there is something there. And in our camera move speed in the update, we need to make sure we append the consts class at the beginning. And same for the move speed here, and the move speed in the Z component as well. There we go. Um, we need to do the same thing for the mouse sensitivity as well. So again, this update stuff here, where we got all the errors, this is all just temporary code. So in Scene Manager, we can do set spot angle to be get spot ink multiplied by 0.15f. That'll do for now. And then it's just scene manager dot get spot angle uh, scene manager dot set spot ink. There we go. And we can copy this bit here into the next branch of the if statement. And we can copy this here, but make sure you change it to a positive one, not negative. That's it. And again, we can grab that. So at this point now, it's just changing all of the variables to, from looking at locally at the test game class just to looking at the scene manager. Uh, the light angle here would be get light, uh, light angle plus 1f um, and then scene manager dot get light angle there we go so, so just using those getters and setters from that class instead of using the local variables. There we go. And the directional light stuff now. We should copy that. If we copy that line as well and change that for the colors and then for the four lines below as well. Get light angle and then those other two directional lights just copy that line again. There we go. So for the, for the list of here, we can just do scene manager dot get entities and scene manager dot get terrains. And finally, in the render, we don't need to pass in these lightings anymore. We can just pass in the scene manager itself. And um, what I want to do is I do want to make some changes here. So instead of scene manager set light angle, I want to create a function called ink light angle, and it's just 1.1f. So if we get rid of that line above, and where the light angle is. And there it is. We can create a new function in here called ink light angle. And we pass in the float of the light angle. And in this this case now it's uh, actually float of increment. That's better. And then it's just this dot light angle plus equals increment. Just so we're not using a getter inside of a setter. Makes more sense doing it that way. Uh, and then we can also do scene manager dot ink light uh, sorry so ink spot angle in the same way and we can just do that by 0.15f so we can get rid of that line there and add our increment for the spot angle this one needs to be multiplied by increment so ink spot angle is the function name we're passing the float of the increment and it's just simply this dot spot angle multiplied equals increment there we go also, for now, when we get in the vector 3 of the cone direction, if we change that to get spotlights dot get point light dot get position just for now, and in the render method, we need to remove all of those direction spotlights and point lights, and we just pass in the scene manager here, and just call it scene. Um, we can go further and pass the scene into the render methods as well, but for now, I'm just going to do scene dot get point light, spotlight, and directional light, and we can pass that through into the terrain render renderer as well. Before you go ahead and run this code now, in the test game class where we've created the entities and the terrains, uh, mainly the terrains, I have changed the x, y and z position of the terrain itself. Where is it? There it is. So it's going to be at 0, 1, negative 800 and negative 800, 1, negative 800. The spotlights, I've also changed those slightly different. As you can see, the light intensity is way higher. The radiance is at 140 and the positions and colors are slightly different as well. Corn direction is negative 50 now. Um, the 
scene manager now the entities are being drawn at position two and um, where's the other bit art ah here it is I've also done two cone directions here but again they're looking at get position not get cone direction so if we go ahead and run that now as you can see we've got the, the spotlight moving across the block hitting the terrain and the block at the same time we do need to go through and make some adjustments to the spotlight and point lights but we'll do that later on and if we change this bit here to be the x direction and spot angle radiance we should see the both spotlights now intersecting and their colors are blending nicely together as well i've also changed it so the camera is initiated at position six so it's elevated off the terrain but thanks very much for watching everyone i hope you enjoyed and i'll see you next time